how do you get started on the path to career reinvention? All right, awesome. So when you're thinking about getting started on any reinvention, there's four things I found, four strategies that I found that help you get started uh, or get off to a quick start when it comes to reinvention. Um, first thing is to uh, invite new people into your process, meaning uh, have conversations with people that you don't know at the moment. So maybe through networking or whatever. Another way of looking at it is having conversations with old friends who you haven't been in touch with, um, i.e. we're old friends. Uh, so because we've all changed, right? As the years go on, we change. So we kind of become new people to each other in the process. And then, of course, like sometimes there are just people you've met that are in your network, probably the majority of your LinkedIn network. You haven't really spoken to a lot, but you may be connected with them at one conference, at one event, and you just made that quick connection, but never really followed up on that. So they count as new. They're just a warmer lead because at least there's some connection between the two of you already. Now, quick reason for why bringing new people into the process is so important to help you get started is because reinvention requires new ideas. Like we need ideas. Like, uh, you know, we're going to have a lot of questions. Like, what do I do next? But, you know, maybe I come up with a few ideas, but what about each idea? What are the pros and the cons? What could go well? What could not go well? And so in order to get the best feedback on that, it's by having new voices and by having people share new ideas, ideas that you would normally not think of. When I got onto my journey to reinvention, one of the things that I thought I would have to do was go at it alone. And when you go at it alone, you only have your ideas and your ideas, your ideas are limited by your own experiences and what you know. And so at the moment, I started inviting new people in and it wasn't super intentional. It just happened to be great timing that, you know, uh, at the beginning of the journey, um, I started to get different ideas. I started to like, wow, like I never would have thought of that. Like, that's a great idea. Let me try that. And these are just the kinds of things that help you make progress sooner rather than later. Otherwise, I just sit there and with my own thoughts and I just kind of keep on like thinking, 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 but I never move. I just keep thinking about reinvention. A year later, I'm still thinking about reinvention. Another year later, and you know, we've probably found ourselves in those kinds of positions for different decisions in life where we thought about something years ago, but we just never acted on it. But we haven't stopped thinking about it. When you invite new people, you start really mixing those ideas up with something brand new that you hadn't considered. You might actually find something that you're like, I can do that right now. Wow, I hadn't thought about that. I, I thought about it in a more complicated way. I thought I needed to enroll in a new degree or something like that. And you just gave me a quick idea of something that I could do starting tomorrow. You know what? Let me try that. So new people. New people will always bring in these new voices, uh, new ideas that we're going to need in order to launch a reinvention. Second strategy is exploring new passions. This is really important because uh, it is, so what I mean by this specifically is trying out new things, like taking a class on something that you normally just have never experienced or haven't really done much of. What you're doing is really priming your mind. You're activating your mind in a way where it opens it up. Um, you're basically just trying to open yourself up to new interests, new ideas, and reinvention is going to be new. There's, there are no two reinventions that are the same, partly because everyone, of course, is different, but also because luck and timing do play a role in reinvention. Sometimes it's about the right time. You know, I, I was thinking about a reinvention to uh, teach educators back in 2008. It wasn't until 2018 that I got a job at UPenn at the Graduate School of Education. You know, so timing played a role in that. Like, it, it's important that I, you know, we wait. And so because of that, no two reinventions are the same. As a result, it's important that we are almost like exercising the muscle for time, for trying new things and exploring new interests and all of that. So by joining classes, taking dance lessons, cooking lessons, whatever it is that you haven't done, just exploring that, you're keeping that muscle fresh and strong. But also, you might be discovering new things along the way. Um, as you start to engage with these new, I often call it dating new interests. When you start to date new interests, if you give them the benefit of the doubt and give them a couple dates, not just one, because sometimes we like do things one time and we're like, yeah, no, that's not for me. Like I... I tried golf. No, nah, no, nah, I just told, I didn't hit the ball once for an entire day. Like I, golf is not for me. Well, that's a fixed mindset at work right there. That would keep us from engaging on a second date with golf. But maybe I just need a kind of a guided second date with golf. Maybe I just need an instructor to help me out and just show me how to swing that darn club so I can at least hit the ball once. And then maybe that gives me hope that I can come back a third time and try it again. And you never know, maybe golf becomes something. But here's the thing about exploring passions that is really important. When you start engaging with potentially new things that you can be passionate about, a different version of yourself really starts to come through. And what I found is that when you are your best and most passionate self, you tend to draw and attract resources, people, and opportunities to you. People can't help but be drawn to someone who is always like fired up about something. 
like it's just like wow like you're so excited about this thing like i don't even i don't even know what that thing is but i, I just want to hear more now because you're fired up about it so i want to be fired up about it so i want to take a little bit of that fire that you've got and i want to like come closer to you same thing happens when you find those things that you're passionate about and one great way to do that is by joining other people on what makes what their passion is about so if you have a friend that's into something join that thing so quick recap we've got one meet new people connect with new people so you can get new ideas two test new passions out so that you can begin to like really unleash your fiery passion itself and possibly begin dating what might become your next reinvention teaching wasn't always on my radar but when i started to date teaching and explore teaching math all of a sudden i was like wow maybe national account sales for commercial refrigeration is not what i'm going to do for the rest of my life maybe I, i'll teach math turns out teaching math wasn't for the rest of my life either but it did become my love affair for about eight years. So it all started with a few dates and continuing from there. Third thing is new perspectives. Um, it's, you know, like most things in life, when we get to see things from a different place, from a different vantage point or a different angle, we see it differently. Um, this is why we seek the guidance of advisors and mentors because they are on the outside looking in. This is why we go to coaches and, and we go to uh, psychologists and psychiatrists because they are, they get to see things objectively. They see it from a different place than we are. When we're in the middle of it, we just can't see certain things. When we come at it from the outside, we obviously do. So it's important that we also practice that, okay? that we do our part to also, in addition to engaging some of these other folks to help us, that we also put ourselves in different positions. Now that could look many different ways. Maybe you're exploring different career opportunities, but still within the medical profession. Well, perhaps one way to do that is to say, how do I, like, can I put myself in a different role? Can I try out a role for like a day? Or can I just get to know these folks? Because I, I don't speak to this role very often, or I don't connect with them very often. And I'd like to know what the world looks like through their eyes, through their lenses. Um, so let me just hang out with them. Maybe I can shadow them for a day. Maybe I can just help out for a day, you know? And when we do those things, we end up like seeing, again, opportunities that we couldn't see in our role. But when you stand somewhere else, you see like, wow, there's a problem that isn't being addressed. What if I designed a business or a solution around that problem? I think there's a market here for that. And you never know, that could be the beginning of a totally brand new idea. But that only comes when we put ourselves in those different positions. Um, and then, so that's the third thing, the different perspective. And the fourth thing is new questions. It's really important that we take on new questions. So what I mean by that is making sure that we have people in our lives who can question our ideas, question our way of thinking. Um, again, this is what, you know, coaches, psychologists, therapists, counselors, they do for us. This is probably the greatest gift, I think, of working with these professionals is that they will ask us questions that we wouldn't ask of ourselves. When we get asked a question that we don't know, boom, cracks our mind wide open. Because all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, I totally didn't see that one coming. The moment I didn't see that, like, we get those kinds of questions, we start to see the world differently. We start to get a new perspective because we didn't consider that angle. We didn't consider that perspective. And it came in the form of a question, and it caused us to think differently about what we're doing or at least how we're approaching it. So I think it's really important when it comes to reinvention to make sure that we are constantly getting new questions. If you can do these four things on a regular basis, you can begin the path to reinvention. I don't know where that path will take you, and you may not know today, but those four things put together will start to help you get more clarity as you move forward.